Let's talk about Thursday. And it is also true to say, if you examine the polls, which I know you do closely, the SNP is losing support for independence in those polls. In fact, it's down to its lowest since the last general election, a 54-46 split in favour of the union. Why is that? There's a variety of polls on this question, Tom, and you, you're right, there has been a varied position that's been demonstrated in those polls. This morning there are polls which show the position on independence to be essentially 50-50. So I think what's clear is that there is a, a very substantial number of people in Scotland want the country to be independent for a long period of time over the course of the last couple of years. There has been um, clear and demonstrable majority support for independence. Uh, that has varied to some extent in some of the more recent polls, but I'm certainly very confident that there are a large number of people in Scotland want uh, the country to be independent and a larger number want the issue to be put to a referendum of the people when it's an appropriate time to do so. Understood, but the one thing that has changed since that pro independence, pro union split was the other way around, and you were on about 55% in favour of independence, of course, is the Alex Salmond uh, affair. Now, we all know how that ended. It was difficult for the SNP. It was difficult for you personally. You got caught up in some difficult voting in, in, in the Hollywood Parliament. Do you think the Alex Salmond Farago, to use one of the Prime Minister's words, has damaged the SNP's standing in voters' eyes? I think it was a very tough period uh, for us all um, and the issues were aired substantially within the Scottish Parliament. I think important conclusions were arrived at as a consequence of the process. There were criticisms of how the Scottish Government had handled the original complaints process but no dispute that the complaints should have been looked at and that, that's one point of conclusion. The second was that of the many points that were uh, thrown at the First Minister, um, to which she responded with extensive evidence to the parliamentary inquiry, uh, the First Minister was exonerated of any breach of the ministerial code, which was a really important vindication of the approach taken by the First Minister and a demonstration of the integrity which we all see around the First Minister. Now, obviously, these issues play out, but then I would cite to you the fact that all of this has been happening and the SNP continues to perform very strongly in the opinion polls in advance of the election on Thursday. But, of course, the election on Thursday is what matters. Opinion polls are all very interesting uh, in advance of the moment, but Thursday and how people cast their votes on Thursday is crucial. And what we're saying to people is if they want to ensure that the country has serious leadership from a serious and experienced First Minister, then they should use both of their votes to vote for the SNP on Thursday. Independence is very much on the ballot paper of this election, uh, absolutely, and we know why it is from you. You want to use this as a mandate for a second independence uh, referendum. But do you accept if you can't win either majority of MPs uh, for the SNP or a majority of the popular vote you simply will have failed to achieve that mandate. I think what's important is what's the outcome of the election and what it leads to. And um, I certainly hope that leads to a majority SNP government within the parliament. That's what we're working to achieve. Uh, we're putting that proposition to the people and, and people have a choice. You know, it, it's, it's very obvious that nobody else other than the SNP is fighting to win this election. Uh, all of the other parties are fighting for variations on second and third or fourth places. So nobody else is putting forward a serious proposition about how to govern Scotland in the aftermath of the election on Thursday. And I think that's quite an important point for your listeners in, in Scotland and voters in the election to think about that there's only one party really putting forward a serious proposition and serious mm. uh, um, uh, campaign for leadership okay. in, this, in this contest. Well, that, they, they might disagree with that. But to, to my question, you, they do have a choice. But, and to inform their choice, which you really should be able to do, if you don't get that mandate of 50% of either MPs or the popular vote, you don't have a mandate for a second referendum. Or do you disagree? I think it depends on what the Scottish Parliament decides in the aftermath of the election. If there's a majority in favour of a referendum on Scottish independence, then at the appropriate time that should be respected and honoured by the United Kingdom government and we should proceed to have that referendum at the appropriate time. So that's uh, the Greens. The Greens are so pro-independence and, and you'll accept their votes so with yours. To well, but, 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 what I'm, but what I'm saying, Tom, and what I said in my uh, earlier answer a moment ago, is that I think the, 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 the dependable and assured way of doing this is for people to use both their votes for the SNP to make sure we can win a majority and therefore these issues take care of themselves. 
Can I put this great dilemma to you, which I'm, I'm sure you're well aware of. It hasn't been spoken about yet, but I bet we'll be speaking about it next weekend. Your big problem is, though, there may be a majority of Scots who might want an independence referendum, might even want independence. What they don't want is a second independence referendum without the United Kingdom government's permission. And therefore, all the UK government need to do, because they know that too, is just keep on stalling. But that would be to fly in the face of the democratic wishes of the people of Scotland. And I'm quite sure the United Kingdom government would not want to be in that position. And indeed, the Conservative Party, who are the current United Kingdom government, it signed up to an agreement which uh, I was party to as well uh, in the Smith Commission established by David Cameron after the 2014 referendum in which uh, all parties agreed that nothing in the Smith Commission report prevented Scotland becoming an independent country in the future should the people of Scotland so choose. So there's an implicit acceptance in that uh, agreement reached by all political parties in Scotland, including the Conservative Party, that the people of Scotland had the right to choose their own constitutional future. And I think that's an important point that has to be considered in this discussion, uh, a really important reflection of the fact that there has to be a democratic route for the people of Scotland to determine their own constitutional future. We offer that. We uh, want that to be um, a, a, an agreed referendum which can give people in Scotland the opportunity, distinct from this election and away from this election, to decide on whether they want Scotland to be an independent country or not. Which is coming out, we hope, of a pretty bitter and unpleasant coronavirus pandemic. Simple question, was Scotland better off with dealing with the pandemic as a result of being part of the United Kingdom or not? We, we took our own decisions in Scotland on a number of key aspects of the handling of the pandemic, but we of course cooperated with the United Kingdom government on a whole range of other questions. And that, I suppose, sums up my view of the world, that I want Scotland to be able to take our own decisions, but I want us to be able to cooperate with our neighbours um, when it's appropriate and sensible to do so. And that enables Scotland to be able to exercise our own choices on how we can manage you know, overwhelming situations such as the COVID pandemic, which I think by all popular assessments, the Scottish Government has has done very well, um, and then to make common ground with others when it's in all of our interests to do so. And that's the type of cooperative mm. and collaborative approach that I want us to be able to see. The thing is, uh, you talk about cooperation with neighbours. The, the help you got from the UK Government, the English NHS as well, in terms of PPE procurement at the beginning of the crisis, and then very much now the vaccine rollout, the British Army was in Scotland speeding up the jab campaign. You were lagging behind as the Scottish Government in terms of vaccination until the UK Government helped. So it's a no-brainer to say that the Union helped you with the pandemic, isn't it? I think... I think by, by all assessments, the, va the vaccination programme has gone very well in Scotland. You know, we've, we took a particular decision to prioritise an area of extreme vulnerability in the initial rollout of the vaccination, which was amongst care homes. And we prioritised making sure that every resident in a care home and the staff in care homes were able to be vaccinated as early priorities. Now, that was time consuming and demanding, but what it's done is given much greater resilience and protection to vulnerable people within our society. And yes, of course, we worked with the army and we were very grateful for the, uh, the contribution that the armed forces made to all aspects of the pandemic handling. And they worked, uh, members of the armed forces worked closely with us and our teams in the government's headquarters in St Andrew's House. Uh, but that's about, you know, th that's resources that any country would have at their disposal through their own armed forces, able to be able to be deployed where they are necessary to do so. And it was a relationship which we valued, but it's one that would be available to any country with their armed forces. Final question, and please do come back so we can thrash all these matters out. I suspect there may be a need to quite soon. Uh, it's very much the SNP's view that an independent Scotland would uh, apply for membership of the EU. Can you say hand on heart that the EU will have you? Yes, because I think the, the, the EU has been an organisation which has made it very clear that um, if, if countries are prepared to sign up to the, the, the fundamental ethos of the European Union, they will be accepted as members. And of course, we were members until very recently and we were taken out of the European Union against our will. So I'm confident that would be the case. Of course, we were told in 2014 during the referendum that if we voted no, our membership of the, of the European Union would be guaranteed. And of course, it's turned out to be entirely the opposite of that. And we've been forced out of the, e the European Union 
against the wishes of the people of Scotland. So uh, I, I'm confident that uh, our ability to become members of the European Union is assured. OK, John Swinney, Deputy First Minister of Scotland, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon on GNT.